Hello, my name is Arnaud Delorme, and I'm the main software architect for the EGLAB software for processing electroencephalography data. This is part five, single subject processing pipeline. And this part is an overview of EGLAB capabilities. It's by no mean uh, tutorial to show you how to process data more than to give you a, a broad view of what is possible. And so there's two parts. This part is about single subject, and the next part will uh, talk about multi-subject and advanced analysis using scripting. And so when you import data from a uh, subject, there's different steps. First, you have to import the raw binary data. Then you have to pre-process the data, reject artifact, extract data epoch if you have events, visualize your data, perform ICA decomposition, and look a little bit more in depth at your data. And so the first step is to install EGLAB. So once you have installed EGLAB, you would type EGLAB on the command line, and then the main EGLAB interface pops up. And there's some instructions about what to do first, for instance, to create or load a, a new data set. And so here, uh, we'll just assume you want to import a raw data that's just coming out of the amplifier. So there's many functions in EGLAB to do that. There's also two additional interfaces, one is called File.io and one is called Biosig. So there's many ways to import raw data from many different formats. There's a wiki page that describes all the data which can be imported. And there's also uh, a huge collection of plugins to import other types of data which might not be supported directly by EEGLAM. So once you've imported your data, you might want to import event information. Like, for instance, if you collected your data uh, and presented the, some images using presentation or E-Prime, you might want to fuse your EG data with these events. So this is uh, the way to do it here. And then you can also import events from data channels. For instance, sometimes you have one channel that contains event information, so you might want to import event from there. And then the next step is to look at your data. So there is a, an option to scroll your data, and you can see the vertical bars here indicate events which, uh, which happened during the recording. And you can scroll through this EG data. Then the next step is to import your channel location. This is an example of 256 channel montage. Uh, you might have a different montage. If you don't have channel location associated with your electrode, then uh, EGLAB can assign template ones if you have standard name for the electrodes. For instance, if you have 10, 20 names, EGLAB will automatically find some template location from these electrodes. But if you have scanned the electrodes, you can also import them using this menu and plot them. Then the next step is to pre-process the data. So it's different types of pre-processing. First, you can edit the, invent the information, the data set information, the event information, the channel information, as we, as we just saw. And then you have different menus on the right to pre-process your data, such as changing the sampling rate. If your sampling rate is relatively high, it's going to take a long time and a lot of memory to process your data. So you might want to uh, change the sampling rate. You can also filter your data. Sometimes there's drift and continuous data. Change the reference that the data was recorded with. Interpolate electrode, reject continuous data by eye. So here's just an example of rejecting continuous data by eye. It's the same scrolling window that we just saw before, but if you drag your mouse, you can actually select bad portions of data and reject these bad portions of data. Then if you have events, if it's an event-related task, you might want to extract data epochs. And when you extract data epochs, you typically provide the name on, of an event, like for instance here, this presentation of a square epoch limit. And then what EGLAB will do is that it's going to go in the continuous data and slice your data around the event of interest. Then it removes the portion, but so the, then the data epochs are represented in a continu contiguous fashion, and then you can reject bad portion, bad epochs, by using different methods. So there's a menu here, for instance, reject data epochs, and uh, here we have three colors: 
the red, the purple, and the green, which indicate three different methods for rejecting uh, bad data. You can also see that the, the channels are in red, which means that they're flagged for rejection. So for instance, here we have uh, five epochs, and then epoch number two uh, here was rejected by three different methods. So this one is clearly uh, an artifact. And you have other method to reject data. So it's just an example. Once you've rejected the, the bad data, you can look, you can start looking at your ERP, for instance. So as in any other software, you can look at the ERP. This is the standard plot to look at ERP. And then when you click on an individual ERP, uh, it, will, it will zoom in for this specific channel. You can also plot ERPs in 2D or in 3D. Uh, so here on the top uh, and it's 2D, on the bottom is, is 3D. You can also plot the spectrum. For instance, if you just have a task with no events, eyes open, eyes closed, you might want to uh, look at the spectrum. And here, for instance, this is the spectrum with scalp topography at 6, 10, and 22 hertz. And each of the line indicate a channel. And then you can also plot what we call ERP image. So in one of the first lecture, I describe how to create this kind of image. And then we'll go through that in more depth when we deal with plotting the data. Once you've looked a little bit at your data, you might want to run ICA, both to reject artifact and try to identify sources which would be relevant for further processing. So to run ICA, Independent Component Analysis, and we have a series of lecture on ICA, so uh, it's just a teaser. You press the button Run ICA, and then you can select which ICA you want to run. And typically what you get is uh, you get a, a collection of scalp topography. Here we had 32 channels, so we get 32 components. And once you click on one of the button, here it shows you the detail about that component its activity through time, this is the blink component, its power spectrum. So that's a way to look at the components. Then to see which components are relevant, uh, first you might want to try to localize these components. So we have this plugin that's included by default with EGLAB, that's called DIPIT, and then you can localize for each component, you can find a dipole, or you can also do distributed uh, source modeling using Loretta. And once you've identified the components you're interested in, the, the goal is to, is to look at your ERP, for instance, if you have an even related task and see which component contribute the most to that ERP. So that's why we have this menu here. For instance, this is called FTOPO. So it's the component ERP with the component map. So it's which component contribute the most to the ERP. So here, for instance, we can see that the peak of the ERP uh, at about 300 milliseconds, it's component number one that contributes the most uh, to this peak. So we, we might want to look in more detail to this, at this component. If you don't have event, you might want to look at the, which component contribute the most to the spectrum. So for instance, these are the components with, which contribute the most to 10 hertz. So here is just the scalp topography at 10 hertz and then the components which contribute the most uh, at 10 hertz. And the scalp topography of the components is slightly different. It's squared because this is the power of uh, the component. With components, you can also look at time frequency decompositions. And there is a lecture also uh, describing time frequency decomposition. Of course, you can also look at the channel time frequency decomposition. So this, this was another view of what you can do on single subjects with components.